What is stronger, a spear or a shield? That's the gist of the eternal arms race. While one side develops a powerful gun, the other finds a way to make their armor stronger or gives old weapons a new life with the help of modern shells. By the mid-20th century, though, it seemed like engineers cracked the code and found the ultimate way to defeat tank armor, heat projectiles, and especially ATGMs. Naturally, militaries around the world started tinkering with the idea of creating a hybrid vehicle. For instance, by mounting a missile weapon system on a well-protected mobile platform. One of the first ever vehicles of this type was the M551 Sheridan, an airborne assault vehicle that the US military accepted into service in 1966. It's important to note that it wasn't on a whim that engineers decided to fit this vehicle with a gun-launcher combo. It was lighter than a conventional long-barreled cannon and offered more utility. In fact, the military were very demanding with their requirements, and the Sheridan met all of them with flying colors. But then Sheridans were shipped to Vietnam, and the war quickly exposed the flaws of the gun-launcher combo. To start with, the barrel had a service life of only 100 rounds. It wore out several times faster than a conventional gun. Furthermore, the gun's tremendous recoil posed a significant challenge to the crew, sometimes even causing serious injuries. What about the Shalala missiles, then? Well, in the beginning, there were simply no suitable targets for the Shalala in Vietnam. No one wanted to fire very expensive missiles at bushes or light tanks. In the end, the Sheridan had a lukewarm reception, but it wasn't completely discarded, as the infantry were desperate for direct fire support. After all, even a single HE shell fired from the Sheridan's gun could wreak havoc in the enemy ranks. With time, some of the flaws of the Sheridan were addressed. In the late 1960s, there was even a plan to mount a modified version of its gun on the experimental MBT-70, but the project was scrapped. The US military were undeterred, though, and a few years later accepted another, and their last, missile tank into service, the M60A2. The difference between the regular M60 and the missile variant was that the latter featured a gun launcher and a unique low-profile turret with the gunner and loader located to the right and left of the gun. The new version of the launcher avoided several problems of the preceding models, like their tremendous recoil, but some drawbacks remain, like having the very same combustible case charges that were highly flammable. The weapon system was also very technologically complex and extremely expensive to build and maintain. At the same time, the M60A2 was sitting in a pretty weird spot in terms of its combat role, somewhere between an MBT and a tank destroyer. Its reload times were way too long to be the former, and the vehicle was way too expensive to be the latter. The USSR was also busy developing their own missile tanks. The Object 775 was a very unusual-looking combat vehicle armed with a missile launcher. As trials showed, the experimental missile tank could achieve surprising levels of survivability thanks to its small size and a variable ride height system. Just imagine, a tank armed with a 125mm gun could have a lower profile than a passenger car. Soviet engineers achieved that by fitting the tank with a hydropneumatic suspension and placing the crew in a special compartment in the turret. Despite the fact that the overall complexity of the design and problems with reliability prevented it from entering production, the Object 775 was promising enough to warrant more extensive development. Eventually, there was a Soviet missile tank that made it into production. It was the IT-1, designed to fire Drakon missiles. The Soviet High Command were staunch believers in the devastating destructive power of this weapon system. At some point, there was even a suggestion to replace all conventional tanks with missile tanks. The IT-1 features a fully rotating turret and a stabilizer. It also inherited its armor and chassis from a time-tested MBT. The vehicle was accepted into service in 1968, but was pulled out after just two years of service. The dead zone around the tank created by the missile's minimum range made it very vulnerable in close quarters combat, and a number of design flaws made the military very concerned with the vehicle's overall reliability. France was also an active participant in this race. The country spent a lot of money and almost 10 years developing the project called the ACRA, or Anti-Char Rapide Autopropulsie. To be fair, the result was pretty impressive. It took the ACRA missile less than seven seconds to cover a distance of three kilometers. 
and the MUC rocket-assisted round could be used to hit targets at a distance of up to 8 kilometers. Ultimately, the project was abandoned as missiles used by the weapon system could not be fitted on helicopters and were prohibitively expensive. The AMX-30 variant fitted with the Accra weapon system ran into the same problems as the IT-1 and the M60A2. There were too many technical complications to use it as an MBT, and it was way too pricey for a tank destroyer. There was also the AMX-10M, based on an IFV chassis, but it didn't make it anywhere either. And then it was the mid-1970s already, and the interest in specialized missile vehicles started to wane. But the eternal arms race of weapons versus armor went on. In order to protect vehicles against ATGMs and heat projectiles, engineers started fitting tanks with blocks of explosive reactive armor. Then other engineers came up with the idea of tandem charge missiles and weapons with top attack capability, like the TOW 2B. By that point, pure missile tanks became a thing of the past, but they were not completely forgotten. Soviet engineers developed special guided weapon systems for their high caliber guns including the Reflex used on the T-80 and the Bosnia for the BMP-3. Chinese arms makers also kept developing weapon systems of this type. For instance, the tanks of the ZTZ-99 series, the Wheeled ZLT-11, and the WMA-301 assault gun all can fire missiles. At the end of the day, missile tanks fulfilled a very niche role. They were way too expensive and sophisticated for fire support, but not versatile enough to replace MBTs. As a result, vehicles of this specific type effectively became just a footnote of military history. But in War Thunder, they get their chance to shine. The IT-1, the Starship, the AMX-30 Accra, and other missile tanks are waiting for you at the highest ranks of the ground forces tech tree. What do you think about these peculiar vehicles? Tell us in the comments below.